Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. January is just about over and we are talking about my monthly favorites today. These are the things that I love during the month of January. I did try out a lot of new makeup in the month of January, but I tried to be very selective with what I picked. So this might be a shorter video. I just have a handful of things to share with you guys. So I hope you are excited about it. Before we get into that, I wanna give a special welcome to my new visitors. Thank you for joining me today. Please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure that notification bell is turned on. With that said, let's get right into it. Okay, let's start off with a primer. I actually don't even know if this is technically a primer or if it's more of a moisturizer. It is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Dew Drops. I know these have been around forever. I heard people raving about these like four or five years ago. And as I have mentioned before, I don't try a lot of high-end primers. I have a handful of primers that I really love, so I don't really buy high-end primers very often. This is just a sample that I think came in a birthday gift, I wanna say, from Sephora. But I have been using this this last month, and it's a really great prep your skin if you have dry skin for your foundation. The older I get, the drier my skin gets, the more I find a primer to be almost a necessary step for me. I used to completely not believe in primers. They just didn't seem like they did anything for me. But I do notice that a good primer or even just a good basic moisturizer really helps to soften up your skin and prep it for foundation. If my skin is not hydrated, my foundation, no matter which foundation I'm using, is going to look terrible on my skin. And I feel like I'm getting to that point where another 10 years and I might be having to come up with some other solutions. But for now, I can get a foundation, in fact, many foundations to work for me as long as I have hydrated skin. And this is a really good option if you don't mind spending a little bit more. Very impressive moisturizer primer, really like prep step for my makeup. Next up is one that you guys probably won't be surprised about. I sent out some spoilers this month in several different videos. I'm talking about the Nabla Two Reasons Blush Duo. This one's in the shade Touch My Soul. I actually have another shade coming my way because I have so absolutely fallen in love with this blush, you guys. I have a feeling I might actually hit pan on this blush, at least within the year. Honestly, I have not reached for almost anything else. There's been a few times that I've forced myself to reach into my blush drawer. But nine times out of 10, this is the blush that I've been reaching for since I first tried it out back at the beginning of the month of January. It is so, so good. I am wearing it on my cheeks today. I just, and I honestly, let me just put a little bit more on. I kind of went in light with the blush today. So I actually like using, so there's a cream, blush and then more of like a balm right here which can be used on your lips i don't use either of these on my lips i just take like two taps into the cream blush one tap into the balm and honestly it just gives your cheek this like beautiful the prettiest color and the nicest plump formula that's nice and hydrating without being too like tacky or greasy it just looks so good on my cheeks i don't know what it is about this if it is the formula more i actually think it's more the color of the blush itself. It just is the perfect shade of blush. If you have kind of light, medium, light skin tones, I just think you will absolutely love this if you're into cream blushes. Another new product I tried out this month that really impressed me, it's from Melt Cosmetics. This is their Stargazer Highlighter. This one's in the shade Digital Dust, which I think is the lightest shade that they offer. Offer. This is fantastic. Such a beautiful highlighter. It is on the pricey side. I was fortunate enough to get mine on sale. I want to say it was about 30% off. I think full price this is a $39 highlighter, but you guys, this is a very impressive and beautiful highlighting formula. It kind of checks all my favorite boxes. I love an intense highlighter, but I like one that is not going to be too glittery or going to emphasize texture too much, which is a really fine line to walk if you have some texture on your skin, which I do. I have a lot of fine like crow's feet lines here and then I'm starting to get some bigger pores right here so it's hard to find a highlighter that's going to give me a lot of glow and not make me look too textury or kind of unnatural and this fits perfectly into that category I just bought this at the beginning of January it might have even been like just two or three weeks ago it had the most beautiful cursive writing on top you guys should see the dent that I already have in this because I really dig my brush into this thing I've been using it almost every day for the last three weeks or so it is really beautiful let's go through some eyeshadow palettes so I did try out quite a few eyeshadow palettes during the month of January I tried out a couple from Melt Cosmetics I really liked those ones the color stories were a little bit bold even though I like that on occasion, I just felt like they didn't quite make the cut for monthly favorites because I have two instead that have really, really impressed me. Let's start with this one right here. This is the Natasha Denona Mini My or My Mini Dream palette. This is a very good palette. Now, 
If you have a lot of Natasha Denona palettes, if you have her original My Dream palette, this shade right here, the shade Nurture, is in that palette as well. I think, I think this whole palette is based along this shade, which is Natasha's very favorite shade. It's a great shade, it's very versatile. Other than that, I don't know that I would say this is like the most unique color story, I could probably, maybe not dupe, but find similar shades in some of her other palettes that I already own, but it's very well curated. It creates a perfect kind of everyday neutral, semi-smoky, or if you just wanna take that shade out altogether, just a much more natural kind of look. The formulas are great, the shades are great, the shimmer to mattes are just perfect. They create a very perfect eye look every time. I've used it a lot and been very impressed with it. I know I mentioned this more recently, but I am planning to do an updated Natasha Denona video because I feel like since the last time I did a ranking video, some things have maybe shifted a little bit. She's come out with a couple new bigger palettes and then a couple of smaller palettes that might have shifted my order as well. So that will probably be coming up in the next couple of months. But for now, if you're into neutrals that aren't too pink or too cool and ashy or too brown. I feel like that's where this palette fits kind of right in between all of those. Another favorite of mine this month is the Sydney Grace Unveiled palette. Do you guys, if you watch me, you know how much I am obsessed with Sydney Grace, period, but especially her eyeshadows. This is a beautiful one. I've been so impressed with this eyeshadow palette. It's a very well curated palette. If you like something that's neutral, if you don't mind a little bit of warm, a little bit of cool, a little bit of pink. This kind of has it all. So I did a video just featuring this palette. I did two looks with it. One using this top row, the pinks, and then one look using the cool tones here on the bottom row. Today I'm wearing this palette, just this row right here, but I also have this, it's basically like a muted white matte that I have on just the inner corner. Beautiful, beautiful, cooler bronze look. I'm actually surprised at how cool toned this eye look is. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if I should say cool toned. It's very neutral. I thought it would look warmer just based on looking, the, looking at these in the pan. It's much more neutral than it is warm. While these two shades right here, I don't know if you guys can pick that up on camera, but you do see a little bit of warmth peeking up through the crease. But other than that, everything in the outer corner, that shimmer I'm wearing on the outer half of my lid and that shimmer on the inner part of the lid, which is this like gold shade right here. It's not overly warm to where, I know some of you don't like warm tones. I love warm tones, but I know some people are very sensitive to warm tones on their eyes. And these are not as warm on the eyes as I thought they might be. So I've been very impressed with this. It's a really fun palette. I'll link the video where I featured this if you wanna know more details about it. It was created by an Instagram bridal makeup artist and these are some of her favorite looks, her most requested looks, or it's based on some of her most requested looks and it is, Stunning. It's such a stunning palette. I absolutely love it. It's in the Sydney Grace formula that you guys know I love so much. You can go softer and lighter with it, but there's also enough dark shades in here to really kind of smoke things out or add some intensity. It's fantastic. Next up is a lip gloss. I just talked about this in a recent video. It's pretty basic. This is a $2 lip gloss from Wet n Wild. It's the Mega Slicks lip gloss. These are the smaller ones. They don't have a lot of product inside them. This one is in the shade Attitude Check. It's basically just a warm, semi sheer nude pink but it's a lovely lip gloss i have been using this a lot it's been coming with me in my purse a ton which is always kind of the sign of what lip product wise is really a favorite of mine there it is right there i have it on my lips today goes with any lip liner underneath it gives just enough color if you don't want to pair it with anything that it's going to do something for your lips but it's also sheer enough if you want to put a lipstick or a lip liner underneath you can do that as well i have found that i really like a warmer nude pink lip color on me. I just think it brightens up my face a little bit. Maybe it's because I'm getting a little bit older. There's something about like a pink cheek and a pink lip that I just think looks really flattering and kind of youthful. And this gloss fits right into that category and it's so cheap. I think it's like 228. Okay, so that is all the makeup I have, but I have a couple of kind of non-makeup beauty items to share with you guys. Let's start with the brush. This is a brush that you guys have seen me use before if you've been watching me for a while, but I don't know that I've ever officially featured it in a favorites video. That is my Alter Ego number four brush. If I am ever using a cream or a liquid blush, which is most of the time, this is my go-to brush for any cream or gel or liquid blush formula. It works for everything. It's the most perfect shape, 
and size and density. No matter what I'm using this with, it flawlessly applies my blush without me having to work too much to blend. It just kind of perfectly applies and kind of blends at the same time. I don't like to work too much on my cheeks, especially when I'm putting on a cream product because I really want to try and maintain the coverage that I put on underneath. The more I'm like tapping at it and blending at it, the more those hyperpigmentation marks that I've covered up are gonna start to peek through. This brush blends out my blush so quickly. I absolutely love it. Now, the only, I guess, negative about this brush is you cannot buy it alone, but it comes in a set that I think is also a very good set. This is the Alter Ego, I can't remember the name of this set. I will link it for you guys down below, but it's basically a full set of brushes. It's $26, which is a fantastic price. I've washed this thing several times. It has not had any issues washing up so far. And the rest of the set is pretty good as well. I don't use these all the time because I prefer some of my other brushes, my Refer, my Sydney Grace, my Persona brushes, especially when it comes to the eyes, but these are still very good. I used them recently in a video I used only these brushes and they did a fantastic job. So I would recommend getting this whole set just for this brush alone because I've never found a brush that works as good for cream and liquid blushes as this one right here. And then these are kind of just an added bonus. Let's talk about some lash curling pads. Random, I know. I bought these on Amazon recently. So I have a couple of lash curlers. I have a Sephora lash curler, and this is just the e.l.f. lash curler that's super cheap. I think this is like five bucks or something like that. I used to get the e.l.f. brand little pads to kind of switch in and out of this curler and also my Sephora one, even though they don't fit that one quite as well. So I had stocked up on those pads for a while. They're super affordable but they do wear out really quick. I found that I had to replace them probably every three weeks. I use a lash curler every single day. So my lash curler gets heavy use and I found that those pads just didn't last very long. So I recently saw these on Amazon. I wanna say this whole pack of, oh gosh, I should count these. I wanna say it's like 20, maybe 30, but I wanna say they were like $8.99, maybe $10. I've had one pad in this curler right here for the entire month. I think I got these back in December and it has not worn out at all. You know how, I don't know if you guys have ever had an eyelash curler where the, it the kind of splits right there at the top and then it like your eyelashes stick to it and sometimes we'll pull out an eyelash or two. This has not split at all yet. It does a fantastic job curling my lashes. It definitely has a lot better longevity and it comes in a pack of like 20, 25. I'll link these down below for you guys. They don't fit this lash curler perfectly. Actually, they fit this one perfectly. They don't fit my Sephora one quite as well. They're a little bit short, but it still works fine. I think generally speaking, these are kind of a universal size and I've just been very, very happy with these so far. They've been a lot higher quality than the e.l.f. ones that I was using. Okay, last thing I wanna share with you guys is actually a perfume. I've never talked about perfumes, I don't think, on my channel before. So I came across this brand. I have no idea how I came across this brand. I'm not really on social media anymore, which is usually where I see ads for things like this. Maybe it was on YouTube, it's possible. This is the brand Okcha. Maybe you've heard of them before. They make knockoffs of popular perfumes. I stumbled upon this website before Christmas and picked up a couple of their perfumes because I noticed they had a couple of Jo Malone dupes. I do have a couple minis of the Jo Malone scents and my favorite one from Jo Malone that I have tried is the Wood Sage and Sea Salt scent. This is such a great scent. It's supposed to be kind of unisex. I don't know that I get unisex vibes out of this. Like if I smell this on a man, it's a little feminine smelling to me, but it's kind of a, I don't know how to explain what this smells like. I should probably look up the notes of this. I have both of these and this literally is a dupe for the Jo Malone. Much cheaper, I wanna say this bottle, which is a 1.7 ounce bottle, is about $35, I think, maybe 40. If I remember right, the Jo Malone bottles are pretty expensive. I think they're around $100 for a larger bottle. So a fraction of the price, I find it lasts really well. I do about two sprays, maybe three, if I'm wanting it to last all day into the night. But as I said, I've had this since before Christmas and I've been going back and forth between these two. So I'll wear this one for a couple of days and then I'll go back to this one just to try and make sure that they smell exactly the same. So I've really been testing them and I'm very impressed with how much this smells like the Jo Malone. I picked up two more scents from them. I don't like them quite as much as I like the Sand Crystal, which is the dupe for Jo Malone. But I also got this one, which is called Praise the Perfume. This is kind of a sweet vanilla, kind of florally powdery scent. This one took a while to grow on me. I didn't like it as much when I first got it. I thought it was almost a little sickly. I actually think the longer it's kind of just sat, 
it's smelling a little better to me. Maybe it's just kind of growing on me, but I like this one as well. This one is easily my favorite. I'm curious to go back and try a few more because I know they have dupes for like Marc Jacobs Daisy, which I don't even know if I like that perfume. I should probably go smell it in the store. I've got some Carolyn Herrera dupes. They might even have some Chanel. Go check them out. I will link them down below for you guys, but I do highly recommend this if you like the Joe Malone perfume. Okay. And that is it, you guys. Those are all of my favorite products from the month of January. What did you guys love this last month? Did you try out anything new? I know January in the past for me has usually been like a no buy. So I'm kind of surprised at how many new things I tried this month. Maybe I'll do another no buy or full month of nothing new coming up in a couple of months. I don't know. I kind of like doing them, but I feel like I run out of things to film and to talk about for you guys. So I, I have mixed feelings about the no buys. So that internal struggle that I go through, I love buying and trying new makeup out for you guys. This is kind of a job for me, but at the same time, Part of me is like, this. it kind of gets ridiculous after a while, so I haven't quite figured out how to balance it yet. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. If there's anything out there, any new releases that you are dying to see me try or that you would recommend, I'm always up for hearing those, so let me know down below. But that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me give you one last reminder to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. In my brows, I have some really weird things, and they're a little bit dark, to be honest, so you probably don't wanna know what's in my brows today. And I haven't sharpened it yet, and I'm kind of scared to sharpen it because it's triangular shaped. How is that gonna work in a sharpener? It probably will work, but it will probably bug me because it'll like skip. And I feel like that's one of those things that would be a pet peeve of mine.